Hey guys, I'm Michael Simon. We are in my home kitchen in Cleveland, Ohio. Uh, I am going to show you how to make one of my favorite things. I've been making it since I've been a little kid. Risotto. It's simple. It's quick. Uh, it's like 20 minutes start to finish and you have to really make it and then serve it. We're going to make it today with bay scallops, a little bit of saffron, some prosciutto. It's salty. It's creamy. It has the magnificence of saffron and it's absolutely fantastic. The reason that I insisted that I have a French top on my range at home is because this is how I cook at the restaurant. And the French top gives you an incredibly consistent heat and it has kind of different heat zones on it. So I need warm stock when I'm making risotto. I could move it to the front of the French top. It's gonna keep it nice and warm. I have my pan directly over the rings, which is the hottest part of the French top, and I'm over about medium high heat now to get my risotto started. The heat's gonna be incredibly even throughout the entire pan. So I don't have to worry about one granule rice being all tough and chewy and the other one being overcooked because I get that beautiful even heat all the way through. So whenever I make risotto, regardless of what the risotto is, I start with a diced onion and a little bit of smashed garlic. Then I add my rice, the rice toast and the fat a little bit. And then you could start building the dish from there, depending on what you're using. Like I'm gonna use prosciutto. A lot of times prosciutto, I love raw. In this case, I love it a little bit crunchy because it adds a textural element to the risotto, which I think is delicious. And I think that's the key when you're cooking at home, guys. Look at a recipe, use the recipe as your guide, and then really personalize it to your taste. So, so important when you're cooking at home. My pan is over the heat. It's been heating up for a little bit. When you're, when you're making a dish at home, put your pans on the heat. That's the other thing I love about the French top. Flames aren't flying out, so you could set your, put your French top on, put the pan on it, let it get hot for about five minutes or so, just so it's heated all the way through. A couple good glugs of extra virgin olive oil. We put in our onions first because you want them to start sweating before you add your garlic. You could hear that gentle kind of sear there. And that's what you want when you're making a risotto. I don't want these caramelized. I don't want them burnt. I want that beautiful even heat and that's what the French top has given me. As soon as you put your onions in the pan, you're going to put in a pinch of salt. And what the salt does is it brings out all the greatness of the onion. It brings out its natural sweetness. It brings out all its flavor. And you need to salt as you cook. When you finish a dish, it should be seasoned perfect. You shouldn't have to wait at the end and put in the salt. You want to pull out all the flavor with the salt. So the onions start. I add my garlic. And we just give this a nice stir. And we let those, in the restaurant we always say we let them sweat. So when you say you're letting them sweat, you're just cooking them till they're translucent and aromatic. They're not caramelizing. When you caramelize them, it brings another level of sweetness. We just want to let them sweat and let those aromas come out. We then add our prosciutto. And we let some of that fat render out in the prosciutto, which gives us that saltiness and that incredible earthiness. Remember, prosciutto has been aged 18 months, 26 months. So a lot of great flavor in there. Those onions have began to sweat. The garlic has began to sweat. It's very aromatic. It smells fantastic in here right now. Now, a boreo rice, a nice short grain rice. <clears throat> this isn't a boiled rice dish. This is a slow uh, 20 minute process where you really want to toast the rice first in the fat, which is not only going to help it remain, that give it that little twosome al dente-ness at the end, but it's also going to give us a chance to develop a little bit more flavor. So the rice goes in the fat before any liquid is added and you're just gonna toast it in that fat. Now, when I was a little kid, but my mom is, is Greek and Sicilian, and when my grandmother taught me how to make risotto, the thing that makes risotto delicious is you almost have to stir incessantly for 20 minutes. So it's a dish that you can get to the table very quickly, but you need to take the time to stir, and that's what releases the starch of the rice, and that's what gives you that creaminess that risotto is so famous for. And we just give this a stir and you could see how it's just gently simmering around the edge of the pot. And that's what we want. Now, the gems of our little voyage, we have a little bit of saffron here. So I add it while the wine is still cooking out in the pan because the wine is gonna help that saffron really bloom and flavor evenly throughout the whole dish. So we stir in the saffron and you could see as we're stirring it in, it's getting that beautiful orange hue to it, almost like a magnetic all right, so our first two thirds of liquid are added. I'm going to add our last third. 
And again, we're stirring and stirring this entire time. And that's really what gives the creaminess. Now, again, here's what I love about the French top. I'm straight over the ring right now. Gets up to about 800 degrees. I'm a little bit below that, just so I get that perfectly consistent simmer and that great consistent heat. The great thing about a French top is you could have over the ring, very hot. You could move it to the front or to the back and the heat starts to decrease. So you could be cooking a lot of different things over the same size uh, space. In my restaurants at Lola, we have French tops all the way across the front line because the cooks and the chefs could move pans from one spot to the other to the other to get it over that high heat, back to a simmer, uh, even a little bit lower than that. So you really have this incredible control. To have the French top to me is, gives you the most amount of control and the most amount of versatility when you're cooking. It's something that you see in restaurants everywhere. You very rarely see in a home kitchen, but if there was one bit of advice I could give to people while they're looking for a range, a French top will make your cooking so much easier, especially if you like to entertain. Because if you have four burners, you could fit four pans. On a French top, you could fit as many pans as you could fit. And you have the high heat, you have the simmer, you have complete control over one uh, amount of space, regard and then you could just set your heat. So I have my heat set to high, so I'm high over here, I'm low over here. So if I wanted to slow my risotto down, I move it to the front corner, continue to stir it. I want to bring it back up, I put it right on the ring, comes right back up to that rolling simmer. So now I don't want to be over that direct high heat. I'm going to pull it to the front corner. The risotto, is the liquid's going to continue to leave. I'm going to pour in my bay scallops. These are raw right now and they're gonna just barely start to cook and get kissed by that saffron, which is so special. Then we take our flat leaf parsley, which I just gave a very rough chop. I'm not a fan of chopping the heck out of herbs, just one pass with the knife, so we get all the flavor in the risotto and don't leave it on our cutting board. I stir that in, and again, I'm not simmering anymore, and that's what I want, and that's the key. You know, that's the beauty of the French top is I could just move to here and I could stop the simmer but everything still stays warm so I'm not serving cold food. Now we take our Parmesan and we grate some of that on top. Now a lot of times, always in Italy, they'll say uh, no cheese with seafood but <clears throat> shellfish holds up very well to this. Um, my grandmother always finished it with a little bit of cheese, I finish it with a little bit of cheese but you don't want to be over that direct high heat because you just want the cheese to barely melt and not get stringy. Look at this. Absolutely stunning saffron risotto. I would serve it right in this pan. The pan is beautiful. And just let people come with a big spoon, scoop it out on your favorite plate. You're good to go. Or right in your mouth. Come on, are you kidding me?